your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Showers are continuing to push through the region this evening. We had a few rumbles of thunder, but certainly our area of low pressure now spinning right overhead. These rain showers are exiting. By midnight tonight, we'll be having a clear and quiet night for us as far as rain is concerned. Uh, 4 p.m., the last check here. Some spots got over an inch of rain. Most spots that here on the board were less than an inch. Certainly every bit of rain good with the drought we're seeing in the region. As we look ahead, Thanksgiving will be dry across the region. Next week, looking quite cold. There's also the potential for some snow in the forecast. We'll talk about that and much, much more. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. Local and state leaders have been asking people to alter their holiday plans this week. How travel options may have done that for them instead. A woman's in critical condition after a shooting where a man is facing charges for attempted murder. And it started with a traffic stop and turned into a chase. So I put an entire neighborhood on lockdown. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. We don't want anybody's Thanksgiving dinner to turn into a COVID-19 super spreader event. The governor made his last call for people to stay home on Thanksgiving. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. Today is normally a huge travel day. But the governor's hoping restrictions will keep those numbers down this year. WCI 3's Cole Hankey's live in our Capitol Newsroom tonight. So Cole, you spoke with some people who are traveling today. That's right, Paul. And travelers that I spoke with were either going to smaller gatherings with just immediate family or traveling to a whole different area for an untraditional Thanksgiving. But travel options for them were already limited. The pandemic already led to transportation options like Amtrak to cut down on routes with their busiest trains only running a few times per week instead of a full five days. And the Amtrak trains capped the sale of coach seats to half of every train's capacity to keep travelers safe. But the governor's office and the Department of Public Health are still fearing another wave of COVID cases following the holiday weekend. Safest thing we can do for one another is stay within our own households. But if you are hell-bent on gathering with others outside your own home, please do it with just a few people. And importantly, this is not the year to have everybody over at grandma's house. Dr. Azike says the telltale signs for another outbreak could, or because of the holiday, wouldn't come for a couple of weeks. It would come in the form of higher case numbers, but wouldn't show in hospitalizations until much later. And the state already saw a spike in cases from the last holiday, with health officials pointing to the mid-November spike coming just two weeks after Halloween. Paul. All right, Cole, thanks for that update. Now, it seems like every day we are learning something new about COVID-19. What we thought we knew about ventilators has evolved throughout this pandemic. For example, doctors at Carl say there used to be disagreement about when a patient needed a ventilator. Now, they say the medical community has a clear idea of the best time, but it depends on each patient's situation. When you get to the place where we have what we call um, non-invasive support, meaning usually a mask around the face, and we can't give you oxygen that way, we then need to go to a ventilator. Ventilators are invasive. Instead of a mask you put over your mouth, they hook up a tube that goes through your vocal cords and down to your trachea, intubating. They give oxygen support to people also who have lung damage. Now, more than 11,000 new infections were announced today. The positivity rate down again 12.2% over the last seven days. 6,100 people, however, are in the hospital with COVID-19. 1,200 in the ICU and more than 670 people are getting help breathing with a ventilator like we just spoke about. Now, 155 more people have died, including 26 in central Illinois. More than 11,800 people have died in Illinois since this pandemic began. A man in Decatur is in custody for attempted murder. Police responded to a shooting near East Moore and South Stone Streets. When police arrived, they found a 66-year-old woman who had been shot in the head. Police arrested this man you see on your screen, 44-year-old Lamar Williams. He was found a a few blocks away from the shooting. Young children were found unharmed in the home. The victim is in the hospital now in critical condition. Neighbors say they're upset about the violence. 
It's very frightening. I've lived here 40 years, or over 40 years, and it never has been like this until recently. Makes you want to move. Decatur police responded to other shootings. During one incident, a 72-year-old man was shot in the hand. A neighborhood of Monticello was on lockdown last night after a man ran from police during a traffic stop. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting joins us now. So, Courtney, this all started when the driver took off from that traffic stop. That's right, Paul. That's exactly what happened. He then tried to run. Eventually, he ended up in someone's shed. Perry Wilkerson was first pulled over for speeding yesterday around 7. That was on I-72 by Monticello. Police say he stopped at first, but then started driving away. But that didn't last long. He eventually ran out of gas about four miles down the road from there, but wasn't ready to stop for police at that point. He then started running and ended up in, a, in Monticello's Applewood neighborhood. I had the garage door open and and I turned around and there's a policeman standing but out in the rain, pouring down rain, and he's saying, uh, we've got somebody on the loose that's coming in this neighborhood. Please lock your doors, lock your cars up, and stay inside. Yeah. Police eventually found Wilkerson hiding in someone's shed. That shed was right across the street from Bob Burton's house, who you just heard from in that interview clip. Wilkerson was arrested at that point and booked at Piatt County's jail. I also talked to a woman who Wilkerson passed on the interstate before he was pulled over. Coming up at 6, I'll tell you what she saw. Live in the newsroom, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Courtney, we'll look forward to that report at 6. Thanks for now. Wilkerson is facing several traffic and drug-related charges. Those include speeding, a taillight violation, and fleeing police. On top of that, he is charged with drug possession with intent to deliver. Officers say everyone should be okay after a four-car crash happened before 5 o'clock this morning at the intersection of Neal and Springfield in Champaign. Police believe one driver went through a red, causing a domino effect crash with three other vehicles. One person was taken to the hospital. A woman in Springfield filed a charge against the city for refusing to cover her gender dysphoria medication under her city health insurance plan. Kate Holt, a transgender woman, filed the charge with the Illinois Department of Human Rights with the help of the Illinois ACLU. She's been an employee of the city since February 2020, and the charge states the city denied the coverage after Holt brought up the issue multiple times. The city's insurance uh, exclusion is so broad as to sweep any transition related care that a trans employee might seek, whether it's the particular medication at issue here or almost any other treatment uh, that a trans employee could need. The charge was filed last week. The city's corporation council responded with a statement saying, quote, the city has not received a copy of the complaint. When we receive a copy of the complaint, the city will review and provide a proper legal response. They've been 18 years in the making. Now, Urbana Park District officials say visitors at Crystal Lake Park should notice some new wildlife. The saline branch of Crystal Lake Park was the site of an ammonia spill in 2002. Since then, the Park District and Illinois Department of Natural Resources have worked to restore the area. The first phase of the project ended this summer. IDNR paid the initial $225,000. The federal government kicked in an extra $33,000. The park superintendent says the years of work are paying off at Cannonball Hill. I saw a guy down there fishing uh, this summer uh, and asked him how it was, and he said, great, he caught some bass. Um, and seeing all the wildflowers, it's just, it, I think that this, that location is especially exciting. Um, and then the other locations that they put in this fall, I'm excited to see next year and how they respond. The entire project will be wrapped up at the end of the year. The Special Investigative Committee at the Capitol looking into House Speaker Michael Madigan is set to meet again. ComEd sent the committee 100 documents that federal investigators used in their bribery investigation into the utility company. The committee will review those documents and meet on December 14th. The president's still fighting the results of the election, but the presidential transition is underway. We'll tell you what that means for the president-elect. Plus, it's being called the largest fraud scheme in California's history, what thousands of inmates are accused of doing. And Jacob, first, welcome. This is the first time we've been on it is. set it's together. Great. A lot of fun. Yes, we're happy to have you here. You're tracking a little bit of rain out there, but there's some drier weather on the way. Yes, we're looking dry for the long holiday weekend. That's the good news. I tell you what, though, Paul, next week could get a bit interesting around here on the winter side of things. We'll have details on that. Of course, today's mild weather not sticking around for long. Cold air also on the way. We'll tell you all about that coming up later on in the show.